Hey guys, welcome back into the studio. Uh, so I kind of just had a great day of teaching and uh, just had some kind of great inspiration that came off of the class today, which is uh, pretty common for me to do. I think at times just having, uh, having all of you guys to kind of feed off of and just having uh, more eyes and, and more discussion about work uh, kind of allows me to build things um, differently and to just kind of push myself into new areas that I may have not uh, gone if I wasn't really thinking about um, you know, showing specific techniques or processes. Um, but today I, I just found uh, that we kind of struck a chord in the middle of the class and, and really worked on some kind of special, um, special pieces. And uh, there were things that happened really quickly, but you know, at times we know that's clay. You know, you can prepare for months and months and months and, and keep working on something. And sometimes, uh, you know, the stars align and you really uh, dial in those kind of texture, shapes, and processes. Um, so I wanted to hop in and cover one of those pieces that we did uh, earlier today, just within kind of a really quick version of that. Um, one of the things that was helped is that uh, I have been experimenting with uh, this newer clay body, uh, which comes out from Sheffield Pottery, and it's uh, just a really fun sculpture body to work with. Um, so it's just very forgivable, has a ton of strength, a ton of standing strength to it, uh, but also uh, just takes the textures, especially those kind of raw clay textures that we gravitate towards, like those torn, those ripped edges and things like that. Uh, so what I'm going to cover today is kind of the series that, um, that I've been working on the past number of years. And uh, I was telling everybody it was actually inspired by this documentary on uh, PBS. I think it was called Between the Folds or Between Two Folds. Um, and it was all about origami, and uh, there was a, um, I think it was a paper engineer and, and a professor, and one of the questions that he posed to everybody was, you know, we know that you can make incredible things um, through folding paper and, and making incredibly complex forms, but what can you do with making two folds? You know, we know you can make great work with 500 folds, but what happens with just one fold? Uh, so I kind of started thinking about that within clay, as far as having just these really uh, simple formats. So it's kind of that same question of what can you do with just one slab, uh, you know, without making any types of additions to it. Um, so I started to just go down that path of, of really chasing down uh, the form and the surface texture, being very minimal with both, while at the same time uh, just trying to figure out how to how to make the clay really um, express a statement and to feel like um, to feel like it's it has something to say. So I'm going to hop right in. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, start making just a long, thin slab. Uh, I will keep it on the thicker side to start, so I'll probably bring this down to maybe about an inch and a quarter. Uh, for this demo, I don't need a whole ton of clay. I tend to start by just doing a little bit of pounding. Uh, and you'll notice as we make this slab, I'm just going to try to continue to square it up uh, so that I don't lose control of it. From here, we'll just start tossing the clay towards my body. I always want to make sure that the back end of that slab hits first and the rest of it stretches on top of that. And then every couple of turns, we will just tap this back down, flip it back over. I'm going to say this is also, um, in part technique-wise, uh, reminiscent of when we had um, Ashwini Bhatt visit the studio and she gave uh, just such a beautiful demonstration on one of her cat's cradle type pieces. Uh, I will say watching her work uh, definitely reminded me about uh, what you can get away with and what you can do with a sculptural clay body as opposed to those um, porcelains and those really fine kind of uh, pottery center clay bodies that we can tend to get um, overwhelmed with. All right, so we're hitting, we're hitting about that point. What I'm gonna do now is just kind of treat the edge. So I'm just gonna run my finger on both sides of those edges. What I will do is just 
create a little bit of a groove. And this doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so now that we have that groove, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna use my personal favorite texture tool, but I would say um, use any texture tool, make any texture that you want, um, or leave it raw. Uh, for me, I always like having that kind of uh, dichotomy of having two sides. Um, so I'm gonna put texture on one side, leave the other side completely flat. And I just think that that can help make the work a little bit more uh, dynamic. Um, and it can just lead to obviously more variation in surface, but also uh, tends to, to make your eye look at pieces differently, where you tend to follow surfaces around rather than seeing it as one homogeneous form. All right, so I'm just gonna roll this. I'm guessing you don't have one of these because this was one of my favorite antique store finds, but if you wanted uh, to recreate a similar texture, uh, just take a toothbrush and, and spend a fair amount of time doing it. Okay, from here, what I'm gonna do is just stretch this piece out, and I'm just gonna do it on one side. In other words, I'm not gonna rotate it because we do wanna preserve this texture. So I'll toss it back and forth on this table, and uh, we're just gonna stretch it out so that it's about three quarters of an inch thick, maybe even a less than that. Maybe we'll go for a half inch this time. Okay. So as much as I can, I do like to try to pull that clay towards me. I will we'll always rotate each time. Maybe just one more. I'm not going to push my luck. Perfect. Okay, so now we have just this incredibly beautiful surface on one side. The other side is completely flat. I'm going to get a wear board ready. And this is where with clay, you do not have the... Um, you do not have the forgiveness or the lightness that you do when it comes to doing paper or origami. So we do have to be very aware that as we start to touch and move this piece, it's immediately going to start moving on us. But what I'd like to do is just set some type of a curve or some type of a twist and get this piece to be moderately self-supporting. Uh, if it can't necessarily support itself right off the bat, I tend to just carry around uh, a lot of recycled sponges that maybe I can fill into a void um, in case I need to go that route. So I have a wear board ready. I'm going to grab just a big old piece of foam. I'm going to place this slab on top of the foam and then maybe work on my twist a little bit. Just think about having this piece fold over onto itself. And that doesn't sound like it makes a lot of sense, but a lot of this for me is just looking at this slab, seeing where I think it wants to go, and then trying to pull it off. Uh, they will definitely not all be success stories, uh, so expect to have some failures. Um, however, it's a really quick process, so for me this is about playing around, um, kind of utilizing uh, the speed that you can make these to really try to capture a gesture um, in the idea that, you know, I might make 50 of them and there might be only five that wind up going into the final kill. A lot of them will get smashed down uh, because I think so much of it is just about creating that motion and that movement and uh, it just has to happen in real time and sometimes um, you're 90% of the way there, but it's just not quite there yet, which is where repetition uh, always comes into play. I would love it if this could just stay just as it is. 
and I'm going to do my best to support that. So like I said, I tend to carry around these extra pieces of foam or these extra support systems so that I can stack these babies up, get a little bit of support in so it can just dry. And for, like I said, this clay, it's just incredibly strong. So as long as I can get that, that clay to support itself for a little while, it has a good standing chance uh, that within an hour or two, we can pull those supports out um, and it will hold itself. I will take that step back and maybe just do a little bit of zhuzhing, so to speak. Kind of fancy sculptural term. And I'm loving this little area right here. It would actually just be a perfect spot uh, to wind up putting a thick signature on. So I love using Jenga pieces to kind of carve out my area for wherever I sign my name. Um, and we're just going to give that a little time to set up, uh, fire it up, and see what it does. Thanks for joining me in the studio today, guys. Um, I would love to see what you guys are up to. Um, and specifically, if you want to join me on this project, I would love to see what textures you come up with uh, and what tools you're using. Um, so feel free to uh, hit me up. Uh, use the hashtag uh, Umbrella Ceramics on Instagram um, or on Facebook if you're uh, trying to upload and share some of these images um, and feel like sharing it with the world or just our, our greater local clay community. Uh, so thank you all for watching today, and I hope to see you very soon, either online or in person. All right, be well.